Welcome, let's talk about conditional operators. So I said that conditions are the basis to every decision that we make. And the way we formulate conditions is by using the relational operators. In this video, what we're gonna talk about is what happens when we need to consider multiple conditions to make the right decision. Sometimes that's what makes life interesting. So in this video, we'll talk about the different operators that are used to modify conditions and as well as combine the result of various conditions to yield one result. Let's define a few terms first. So a condition I said is just a Boolean variable. And at one point during our execution of our code, we find the result of that condition. We know whether that condition comes out to be true or false. So when that happens, we said that the, that the condition is evaluated. That's when we know the result of the condition. And when a condition comes out to be true, we say that the condition has been met. And when the condition is false, well, we say that the condition has not been met. With that in mind, there are three conditional operators, not, and, or. Let's talk about not. The not operator is actually quite easy and all it does is it flips the result of a condition. So if a condition came out to be true and you not it, you basically make it false. And if a condition came out false and you not it, then you make it true. What makes the not operator very powerful is that we can actually define the opposite of a question by simply using this operator. For example, I could either ask the question, is it cold? Now let's say that I want to ask the opposite question and say, is it hot? Well, when we write code, we have to define how we ask these questions, which means if I want to know the answer to these two questions, I will have to define the two questions in my code. However, you will notice that is it hot in a way has a relationship with is it cold, meaning that they're kind of the opposite. So one way that I could ask is it cold and is it hot by simply using the not operator, I could say is it cold and is it not cold. So now using the same question, is it cold? And in combination with the not operator, I can now ask both questions with only one question definition in my code. The not operator is called a unary operator. And that's because it only takes one operand in order for it to apply the operation. It takes a true and produces a false, or it takes a false and produces a true. The AND operator, unlike the NOT operator, is called a binary operator. And it's very similar to all the other arithmetic operators that we talked about. So addition, for example, when you say five plus seven, you take two numbers, five and seven, and you add them to produce one number, 12. So the AND operator works the same way. It's going to take two values, two conditions, their result will be ended together to produce one result. The AND operator works as follows. It takes two conditions and it checks the values of the two conditions. And it will always give you a false result unless both conditions are true. So let's take an example. I'd used in the previous video an example of, is it, should I wear a sweater? And that decision came down to two conditions. Is it cold outside and do I have a sweater, right? So I said, is it cold and I have a sweater? There are two conditions here and both conditions have to be met, meaning both conditions have to be true in order for me to truly wear a sweater, right? So what happens if one of those conditions is not, is not met? So for example, if it's not cold outside, well, it is false that I will wear a sweater, right? If I if it is cold outside, but I don't have a sweater, then it is also false that I will not wear a sweater. When will I wear a sweater? When both conditions are true. So if it is cold and I have a sweater, then it is true that I will wear a sweater. So in an and operation, the result will always be false unless both conditions are met or both conditions are true. The OR operator is the complete opposite of the AND operator. So we said the AND operator is always false unless both conditions are true. The OR operator is always true unless both conditions are false. So let's, let's just, just listen to this example real quick, just the plain English, just listen to it and you will feel the difference. If I say, if it's cold outside and I have a sweater, I will wear a sweater. Now let's change the AND to an OR. If it's cold outside or I have a sweater, I will wear a sweater. Can you feel the difference? In the end case, both things have to be true. It has to be cold and I have to have a sweater so I can wear a sweater. In the or case, it might be not cold outside, but I might have a sweater, right? So if I say if it's cold or I have a sweater, well, if it's not cold, but I do have a sweater, I will still wear the sweater. So in this case, there are many ways that the result could be true, meaning 
if any of the two conditions are true or both conditions are true, the result is going to be true. The only way that it will fail, the only way that I will not wear a sweater is if it's not cold and I don't have a sweater. And that's it. Now that we understand how these work conceptually, let's go take a look at code, see how we implement them, and then we run some examples. So here we are in the same Learn CPP project where we left off last time. And so one thing I have to say before we start is that all these operators, they have a particular symbol that we use to represent them. Remember the arithmetic operators? We never said add or subtract or multiply. We use symbols. So for something like addition, we used a little cross. For subtraction, we used a little dash. Multiplication, we used a star and so on. So the conditional operators follow the same syntax. They have a particular symbol. So let's go over the three operators and I'll also show you what symbol they use and we'll go over a few examples real quick. So here we are in the same code, right? So I'm gonna delete these and I'm just gonna say uh, result is equal to true, right? And then we're gonna show the result. And we say that if it's true, this value right here will be shown as a one and if it's false, it's going to be a zero. So let's run this. Okay, result is one. Okay, notice that I made the font bigger. I figure this make things a lot easier. Okay, so now what I would like to do is I would like to say this is not true. I want to make it into the opposite without actually writing false, right? This thing is true, uh, not true, true. This thing is always going to be true, but I would like to modify it without actually changing the value. So this is why we use the not operator, right? So I could come in here and I would like to do something like not true, right? However, uh, in some places, this might work. In some programming languages, you, this is actually what you write. You write not. In C++, we have a particular symbol, like I said, and that symbol is an exclamation mark, literally an exclamation mark. So instead of saying uh, not true, we put exclamation mark true. And all of this is saying is flip the true to a false. So when we run this, we will see result is zero, right? And if we make this a false, and we have a not right in front of it, then this of course will be a result is a one, right? So the not operator, it's actually very simple, right? Whatever this is, if this is a true or false, just flips it. That's it, not a big deal. Now, let's go take a look at the end operator. So the end operator, so notice this was a unary operation, operator. It only took one operand. It took the true, it took the false. The end was a, it's a binary operation. So it requires two values. So instead, what I would like to do is, let's just write some comments here. I would like to say something like, like true and true, right? Or something like that. So what I wanna write here is I can type true and, uh, and instead of and, the symbol for the end operator is two ampersands. Why two? There's a reason. We'll talk about it in a future video. For now, just believe me, we're going to, it's two ampersands. So it's going to be true and true. And what this is going to do is that it's going to evaluate true and true, and it's going to produce one Boolean result, and it'll be assigned to result. Now, we said that the end operation is always false unless both of them are true right? So in here, what both of them are true, right? So we expect to get a true. So let's run this and we should get a true here, right? Result is one. And so if I come here and one of them is false, if I make either one of them, let's make this one a false and we run it. Here we go. Result is zero. Let's make another one. Let's make this false and let's make this one true. And we run this. This is also going to be false. And then let's run the last combination, which both of them are false. And in this case, it's going to be also a false. So again, always false unless both of them are true. It's that simple. Now, we're going to talk about the OR operation or operator. The OR operator also uses two symbols, kind of how the AND uses two ampersands. The OR operator uses two pipes. Now, a pipe looks like a capital I, no, like, yeah, like a capital I or a lowercase l. It's that thing on your keyboard that literally looks like a vertical line. So it just looks like this, false or false, right? And what did we say? We say that the or operator will always give you a true unless both of them are false. So in here, they're what? They're both of them are false. So if we run this, we're going to get what? We're going to get a false result is zero, it's a false. So if we make one of them true, no matter which one, and we run it, it's going to be a one. Or if I make the other one, let's make this one false and let's make this one true, then this is also going to be a true. And if both of them are true, well, they're also going to be, it's going to be a true. So again, 
you know, you can sit down and think about questions that you make throughout your everyday life where you say this and that, and you will realize that when you say and, you're saying both things have to exist, both things have to be true, they have to be met for me to actually follow through. Whereas when you say or, you simply say it doesn't matter which one, as long as one of them is good, it's met, it's true, then I'm going to do such thing. So the or is more flexible to give you true answers, whereas the and is more flexible to give you false answers, right? So you, you can think about some questions that you do in your everyday life and ask yourself, why are you saying and and not or, right? Like, let's say today you're thinking about eating something and you say, well, which conditions am I considering to decide what to eat? And if you have multiple conditions, wonder why did you say this condition and that condition versus this condition or that condition? Just think about that. Why why and and not or, or why or and not and? And you start to pick up and realize that that's the important part. One, you need all of them to be true, whereas the other one, you just want one excuse, one little excuse, and then you'll follow through, all right? So again, this video, just to show you how the conditional operators work, in the next video, we're actually going to go through an example. So we're going to take the same uh, scenario that we've talked about in the previous video where I said, do I need a sweater? We're going to write code and this code is going to determine for us whether we should wear a sweater today. It's gonna to be our first little application that we write in this series. And it's basically, you know, we're trying to transfer a question, a real life problem, should I wear a sweater and have a computer determine that for us. And in the video that follows, we'll talk about what happens when we have many more conditions. Cause in here we're talking about two, right? But what happens if you have something that sounds like this and that or that, but not that. Right? You, you see all the ands and the ors all put together. So we'll talk about those in the video that follows. If you have any questions, if you want some more clarification, feel free to leave a comment below. If you like this video, if you learned something new and you don't mind, leave a like. If you're new to this channel, check out the series, check out the channel. And if you like what you see, subscribe, be safe, and peace out.